Further, implicit in the commandment of God to Avram to leave his country and to leave his father and to leave his family is that separation is demanded. What Abraham was going to have to do could not be accomplished by remaining among the people, including his own family, thoroughly dedicated to their perverted religion. This constant pattern of God dividing, electing, and separating continues, therefore, by the creation of the first man of a new nation of people, a people who would be set apart just for God. I can't imagine that Abraham took this instruction to leave behind everything he knew in exchange for some words of promise, even if the words were from a recently introduced God, without a lot of doubt and trepidation. It is equally as unthinkable that he simply accepted everything God said and carried it all out in absolute purity. One can be divided and elected, as was Abraham, but that hardly means that all ingrained thoughts of the previous 75 years of life, all the traditional, the unquestioned ways of behavior, behavior and, and of worshiping gods that he had learned simply fled from him. If it were that easy, in matter of fact, the forced separation of Abraham and those who would go with him from the old wouldn't have been needed. See, this concept of separation is central to Christ's teachings. Although it's not usually recognized as such, it just seems as though these are but several of our Savior's statements that cause us a lot of trouble. Here is the classic statement along those lines in Luke 14:26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. This is all about separation, not about hatred in the sense that we typically think of it in the modern times. This is being prepared, expecting to perhaps be at odds with those closest to you as was Abraham with his family, once you are called by God. Recognizing that you can no longer remain tied to the past, particularly if it's a wicked past, and that God's calling surpasses any other purpose for your or my existence. Let's listen to a little more of what Jesus would say on this subject in Matthew 10, 34. Don't think that I've come to bring peace on earth. Well, that's a hard one, isn't it? Don't think I've come to bring peace on earth. I didn't come to be, bring peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. That's tough. In Bible speak, Many of the members of Abraham's household became his enemies because he was called by God to abandon everything they held dear, to become God's man for a very special assignment. Christ came to divide and separate a sword as perhaps no other before him. The sword spoken of. By Yeshua is not so much a symbol of killing, it's a symbol of dividing, of cutting. And he recognizes that for some, the circumstances of, of their being set apart for him are going to be agonizing, heartbreaking. Therefore, he continues by saying in Matthew 19 29, for everyone who has left households or brothers or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or children, or farms, for my name's sake, they shall receive many times as much, and they shall inherit eternal life. 
separation, which is often expressed in the Bible using words like set apart or, or, or sanctified or distinction. Separation must occur in one form or another if one is going to be a true believer. This is because the primary change in nature for a human as a result of salvation is that he or she becomes holy. Did you know that by definition, holy means set apart, separated out? 